Well, I've always wondered whether leases are a devious way of hiding company debt. Okay, so a lease is a right to use something. And the idea is, are companies using leases as a really sly way to hide the fact they're borrowing money? And in my research, what I thought I should do is to try and find out, do they do so or do they not? Because you see, some people actually believe that leases are nothing more than a way to hide debt. And most importantly, accounting regulators believe this is the case. And from 2018, they're going to have a new set of rules which say that all leases must appear on the balance sheets of enterprises because they are an asset just like any other asset. So on the one hand, we could say that accounting standard setters have concluded and regulators have concluded that leases are just a devious way to hide debt. But then, on the other hand, is this correct? Let's think about the following. Ryanair has lots of money, but they lease planes. Question is, are they leasing planes to hide debt? Or are they leasing planes maybe so their operations can be quite flexible? Or perhaps that they avoid some of the risks associated with aircraft prices? So I think it's interesting enough to ask, does, you know, on the one hand, we could say leases are a way to hide debt. On the other hand, we could say, well, maybe there's something else going on. So let's think. The most frequently leased asset is real estate. So real estate dominates every form of lease. And I ask myself, I go out and I look at, say, an ATM out stuck in a wall. And I ask myself, did that bank go along and think, we have a really good idea here. Rather than buy a square meter to put our ATM on and have to borrow money and show debt on our balance sheet, instead, we're going to be really clever. We're going to get this fictitious piece of paper called a lease, and we're going to rent the piece of land rather than buy it. Or consider a coffee company that wishes to open a shop in a business school. Where are they sitting there thinking, hmm, we've a really good idea. If we rent this couple of square meters in the business school, we will avoid putting debt on our balance sheet. In other words, are there lots of other considerations when enterprises enter into leasing arrangements other than trying to hide debt off balance sheet? So I thought to myself, can we go along and research this problem in a sensible way? So what I did, I went along and I looked at the largest 4,000 companies in the United States. And firstly, I measured the riskiness of their equity. And the idea is that if you borrow money, your equity becomes far more risky. For example, supposing you go out and buy a house and you borrow lots of money to buy your house and then property prices go down just a little bit, it turns out you are in great difficulty. On the other hand, if you don't borrow money, you have a lower level of risk. So the idea is equity risk, we would expect, as you borrow more and more money, the equity risk should go up and up and up. So I take equity risk for 4,000 US companies, and I say I will take two things. I will take debt and things that they lease. And I will say to myself, well, if leases are just like debt, we would expect that leases and debt have the same impact on equity risk. So I did a variety of statistical tests. What do I find? Leases have a far lower impact upon equity risk. In other words, there is something else going on apart from leases being the same as borrowing money. Largely, leases may serve a role of getting debt off balance sheet, but chances are that role is far outweighed by the other things that leases achieve. For example, increasing flexibility and also dealing with things like residual value risk. Namely, if somebody goes out and rents a piece of land to put an ATM on it, it means they do not have any property price risk as a result of entering into that transaction. 
So largely, if we're to think about these regulators with the new set of rules that are going to come in from 2018, first thing is, it's going to be a lot of work for enterprises to count up all of the leased assets that they have. And the second challenge is going to be that for analysts of financial statements, clearly these assets, the assets which are leased, their risk characteristics are very, very different from the assets that are owned. And so my next stage of research is to work out, can we get better analytical techniques to deal with a set of accounting rules which are based upon a false premise? Thank you.